65 is on the road here in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2024. There's no surprise, the big discussions, the big announcements, and all of the conversations are about generative AI and enterprises uh, lighting up those capabilities. Uh, and as we've discussed on the show and I've published in my company's research, one of the biggest impediments uh, to scaling AI is data management. And not only the data management, but, but also getting a handle around the governance uh, related uh, to AI. And that's what we're going to talk about today with the uh, CTO at Cohesity, uh, Dr. Craig Martell. Welcome to the 6-5. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate it. You have a very illustrious background. Uh, we were talking about that in the uh, virtual uh, uh, green room, all about AI. And it's pretty impressive. You were doing AI before it was cool. I mean, I know the algorithms started in the 1960s, but 10 years ago, it really started to uh, light up there. So um, I'd like to talk, uh, drill down a little bit into what I uh, said in the lead in, which was asking you, how is AI used in, in data management and how are you extending it uh, to data insights? That's a great question, Pat, thanks. Um, um, my career may or may not be illustrious, but I have it just by getting old. <laughs> so if you're around long enough, you've done enough things. 35 years, guilty. Okay. Uh, and I, and I, I tend to say that I won the lottery because I started doing AI be, uh, back in the late 90s yeah. before anybody thought it would do anything, right? And so then suddenly I wake up and it's pretty effective. So it's an exciting yeah. time to be working in this field. On the 90s, that, that, that's impressive. You know, it's funny, I was thinking, okay, the algorithms came out in the 60s. Uh, we didn't really have the uh, compute power storage until, you know, maybe seven or eight years ago when ML took off. That's cool in the 90s. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was slow and didn't work at all. And nobody <laughs> was working in it. And so I did it because I thought it was cool. Right. Um, so back to the original question, how is AI used for data management and how are we extending that for data insights? Um, you know, think about how backup actually works. Uh, data protection. The technical yeah. term is data protection, um, but it's backup. Cohesity and a company together figure out the important data. Right. We back that data up and we protect it. And um, part of that protection, and is this is part of the data management, is figuring out if it's being attacked. Yeah. So we can see all of your data, and if you're having a ransomware attack in the front, we actually notice that in the back. Okay. We can see changes in, we say changes in entropy, but we can see that more and more things are becoming encrypted that shouldn't be encrypted or yeah. that historically weren't encrypted. And we also uh, have a product that allows you to have an immutable copy of that. So if we notice that that encryption is taking place or that change in entropy is taking place, we can alert you to say, hey, we think there's a particular danger here. That's AI, right? That's, right. I mean, today we would call that machine learning, but to me, they're all of a piece. I don't think modern AI is that different than old fashioned machine learning. We can talk about that if you want, but so, so that's machine learning. Another part of the machine learning uh, to protect your data is to figure out the sensitivity of that data. Does that data have credit card information? Does that data have PII that might be really valuable? Right. So we can actually alert you. It looks like you're having an attack and it looks like they're attacking this kinds of sensitive data. Um, and we can prevent that data from being backed up so it doesn't overwrite the, the um, prior version and right. we can instantaneously help you restore it if that's the case. So AI is all throughout that. Right. So that's sort of classic AI for data protection. Yeah, and by the way, just quick sure. comment. What I find it fascinating is kind of this virtual cycle. You know, my lead in, one of the biggest impediments is data management to get to AI, but you're actually using AI to help- To do data to, management. To do data management. 100%. <laughs> so we call that pillar one internally. And, yeah. and pillar one is the AI that we do to protect your data, Yeah. right? Pillar two is the AI that we do to help give you insights into your data, which I think is a, a traditionally have been overlooked. You have, you have the CIOs over here protecting your data, right. and then you have the CDOs, and their job is to make that data accessible and available to provide business insight. Right. But they don't really talk that much, and we really need to get them talking because we already have that data. So if we can allow particular kinds of access to that data, then we've done a lot of the CDO, then, then the CIO has done a lot of the CDO's job and can provide real value in that direction. Right. So currently we have a product called Gaia, uh, stands for generative AI agent or generative AI application, depending upon who you ask. I don't know, I, I, the history was before me. <clears throat> but Gaia allows you to have a chat GPT-like interaction with your data. So you can select a data set, you can select the permissions, it's really important, select the permissions on who can actually right. have the conversation with that data. And you can ask it questions like, 
um, uh, what was the thread I had with Pat two years ago about the following thing? And it will summarize that for you. Now, part, part of the issue with generative AI, we can talk about this when we talk about sort of, sort of the, the, the dangers or the potential problems, is that if it doesn't have the right information, it can hallucinate. Right. So it's extremely important that we have the links back to the original email so you, or the original documents right. so that you can actually look yourself and say, okay, right, this, yeah, the metadata, this, right, this is the right question. Yeah. yeah. So what I find fascinating, I think Gaia was announced maybe uh, a year ago. I think it was a year ago, yeah. And what I really thought was just so pragmatic and awesome was the fact that uh, the data is there. Right, and typically it's just sitting there. Uh, it, it is sitting there. When I and, use it, and typically in the workflow, you're ETLing the data off to maybe a data lake, uh, pulling a data warehouse, and then you're activating that data. Here, it's there, right? It's going to be there, and everybody has to have data protection and backup. Um, can you catch us up, though? What are the recent developments uh, around around Gaia? Yeah, that's great. Um, the the large, in my opinion, there's two big recent developments, and there's there's some some smaller ones as well. And I might not remember all because it's been a very productive year for yeah. me. Um, the the two big ones for me is that we're not just doing cloud-based stuff; we're moving to on-prem as well. So your your Dell EMC, Dell EMC, Isilon, your NetApp, your NetApp, um, NAS, right. um, uh, our own smart files, or any you know on on-prem filer that you have. You can start selecting files from there to be able to to be able to do that, and that's a huge to be able to do Gaia on top of it. Well, it is huge. I mean, because eighty percent of the enterprise data, on average, is sitting on prem uh, at the enterprise edge, or even maybe sitting on devices. Somewhere. That's right. and it also depends upon the industry. If, right. I mean, if you're a new startup in Silicon Valley, you're probably all in the cloud. Yeah. If you're a bank, you're like, or you're you're a hospital or an insurance company. You likely have requirements to have it protected in ways that's right. on cloud. And so being able to ask these sorts of questions, not just to the cloud, but also to on-prem is going to be a big win for yeah. us. No, for sure. Um, so you're CTO. Mm -hmm. I know you know that. Hopefully you do. Um, just joking. Um, and you have this really interesting job that you have to have a future state uh, it's kind of the art of the possible, mm -hmm. right? The technology, and you have to intersect that with the needs of, of what people think they need. And, you know, the, the product teams can, can, you know, you're all working together to put that out there. But I have to ask, what kind of predictions uh, do you have for uh, 2025? Let me start by saying that, that I'm actually a professional AI skeptic. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. At, at the same time, I'm, this is the most exciting time in AI ever. It's also probably the most, over, the last two years have probably been the most overhyped ever. Sure. And so when I say I'm a professional AI skeptic, what I mean is I really want to be a realist about these things. And so one of the things we're doing in the office of the CTO is absolutely forward looking. And I'll tell you, that forward looking is around this sort of Gaia notion that this data is sitting there. What insight, this, remember, we call that pillar right. two. What insights can we bring to your business from right. that data? Almost all of our energy is spent there. Um, because the the backup teams are excellent, they're experts. They know what they're doing. What my team is focused on is how how can we bring that that data the data that's just sitting there. How can that value um, be immediately useful for your business? How much of that is going to be magical AI is really the battle we have internally, right? Um, two years ago, the notion of Gen AI was you buy this box or you 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 subscribe to some service. And then every one of your problems is solved. Well, we've all seen that that actually doesn't work anymore, right? Like we've we've heard stories about the lawyer that that had ten made up cases or whatever the number sure. was, right? So so the hallucination problem is real. The the um, uh, the selection of the files that you're going to summarize over is real. So there's a lot of sort of nuts and bolts work that we also have to do to make sure that we deliver on that promise. The way that I say it is, look, the the waters of hype are going to recede. Uh, they've already started to and a lot of sand is going to be washed away, we want to make sure there's rocks left over. And that's really where we're focusing on energy. No, I think that's a great place to put energy. I mean, our research suggests that the big boom in enterprise AI is probably 18 months, uh, two years away. And one of the bigger challenges is, you know, in the old ML world, um, it was really specific to a certain area. For instance, it's ERP data. Yeah. It's productivity data. Yeah. 
uh, it's uh, PLM, it's CRM data, and you can activate on that HR. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, the thesis here is is you should be able to have this data and be able to activate it across and get get better insights. So, for instance. You're trying to connect the front end of the house, which is, let's just call it CRM, mm -hmm. the back end of the house, which is ERP, uh, to have, you know, to basically energize people. And then you have to figure out who really should have access. Should uh, the frontline worker have access to the uh, uh, pay compensation packages for the top 100 people in the company? Probably not. Probably not, but those things have happened mm -hmm. uh, with the early instantiations, and, and that's key. So hopefully you're keeping your eye on how people, only people who should get access, get access once that data is activated. So a lot of things to say there. One, for sure on the permissions, one of the benefits of backed up data is we can actually back up permissions as well. So we actually yeah. know the permissioning structure of your company to a large degree. And we have other layers on top of it that allow, say, like a compliance team right. to say, no, 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 only legal gets to look at this, right? Yes. So, so we, we, yes. we have really tight constraints on that. And that's extremely important. And we don't want to release a product that's going to allow, uh, you know, the, the dock worker to know the CEO's uh, salary. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm also really excited, and I'm going to say a buzzword, and I kind of hate myself for it, about agentic AI. Yeah. Because <laughs> what, what, is, what is the AI agent? Let's actually be clear about that. It's really just a mapping from a query to a plan. It does something. Right. Well, it, yeah, it's a plan, <laughs> right? And so that makes it sound a little bit less magic. It's just this query means do these end steps, do these five it's steps. It's not a search result. It's something that is actually activated on based on a search. I know it's not a search. That's right. But to it's normal a people, it's a it plan. Is. And yeah. part of that plan might be to do something, or part of that plan might be to do some more searches uh, across these disparate data sets, right. like you mentioned. But I do want to say AI is not monolithic. We can't think about buying a magical solution, throwing at it, and suddenly it works perfectly. Uh, you have to think about the use case you want, even though it's disparate data. There's a particular use case, and you have to gather the data for that, build the model, and train and evaluate for that use case. So that's good old-fashioned yeah. machine learning engineering. That hasn't changed, and I really want that message out there. Yeah, great conversation. Uh, Craig, I really appreciate you coming on the show here. Thanks so much, Ben. I love your pragmatic realism um, as well, because I think we all need a wake up call. I think the initial investment cycle was required, otherwise we wouldn't be here. And if it's you look at the last, well, if you look at the last five waves of technology going back 40 years, they always had a hype cycle. And I think it's, it's required and it, it figures it out. I'm feeling really good though, because when it works, it works and it works really well. So thanks again. Thanks appreciate so much, Pat, that. I appreciate it. So thanks for tuning in to uh, this discussion on AI and data. Uh, tune in to all of the AWS reInvent uh, content and check out all of the videos that we've done for Cohesity. Thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button. Take care.